Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm gonna share five super fun activities to help you teach adverbs in a way that is fun and exciting to kids, but also helps them make connections to real reading and writing. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the little bell so that you get notified every time I post a brand new video about teaching literacy in K2. All right, so first of all, let's talk about what an adverb is. An adverb is a word that describes a verb, an adjective, um, let's see, another adverb, or even an entire sentence. So the definition that we're really going to focus on today is adverbs describing verbs. That's usually what I teach. When I teach adverbs in second grade, I pretty much just leave it at that. Um, and we really just work on adverbs that describe verbs. So that's what we're going to focus on today in this video as well. I also want to mention that there is a myth out there that adverbs have to end in the letters L-Y, like quickly or slowly. Adverbs can end in L-Y, but they don't have to. Words like very or to, T-O-O, can also serve as adverbs. If you were taught or you heard that adverbs end in L-Y, leave me the word yes in the comments. And now you know that they don't have to end in L-Y. All right, let's go ahead and get into our five fun activities. These would be great for second grade, third grade, maybe even fourth grade. If you teach first grade, I know a lot of teacher, first grade teachers don't even teach adverbs, but some of these could probably work for you as well. So after I introduce adverbs to my kiddos, um, we may make an anchor chart or I may just have something prepared like this. So hopefully you can see that okay, but basically it just says adverb examples, quickly, loudly, slowly, quietly, all that good stuff with some pictures. So then after we have come up with or talked about a lot of different examples, um, we will play an act it out game. So for this game, it could be something that you play whole group or you divide the kids up into small groups and they do it that way. But you would um, ideally have some kind of like poster or chart or list that they refer to. And then you have one leader. And again, if you're doing it whole group, it's just one leader and the other kids guess. But then if you have small groups, each group would have a leader. And then the other kids in the small group would guess and they're kind of like all working at the same time. But anyway, that leader has to pick an adverb from the list, not tell the rest of the group, and then they have to do something to act it out. So you can kind of see some examples right here in this little chart. This is from um, my second grade Grammar Alive program. So like the word gently, they could do something gently, loudly, they could you know, mimic doing something loudly, and then the other kids have to guess what the adverb is. It can help if both the leader and the guessers um, have access to the same list or poster, but if the kids are really familiar with a bunch of different adverbs, then you don't necessarily have to give the guessers access to the poster, and they're just supposed to kind of pull from their brains and what they've already learned. Okay, so that is acted out, super fun. Um, next one is partner talk and or write. So in this really simple game, um, you would have, again, like a list or maybe some adverbs on index cards or individual pieces of paper. And one child will, the kids work in partners, one child will select an adverb and the other partner has to either say a sentence that includes the adverb, that's the easier version, or possibly write a sentence that has the adverb. And then they switch roles, right? So, you know, one kid talks or says the sentence or writes the sentence. And then the next time they get to choose, um, you know, whatever adverb is for their partner and their partner talks or writes. So they kind of go back and forth that way um, with several different adverbs. Next up, we have a game called team adverb or adjective. So this is something that you would do after you've taught both adverbs and adjectives. Adjectives can describe nouns, whereas adverbs, um, like we talked about earlier, could describe a verb. Um, an adjective, another adverb, a whole sentence even. But like I said, the definition that we're using for this like second grade example would just be that they describe verbs. So first you might have them do just like a little sort. 
okay, for adjectives and adverbs. And you would have like word cards, some are adverbs, some are adjectives, they have to put them in the right spot. And then you can play the game. So for this super fun game, you would need some more word cards um, just on the index cards, right? Some of them have adjectives on it, some of them have adverbs, and you mix them up and you put them in a stack. And then you divide the class into two groups. And one group is team adjective, and one group is team adverb. And obviously they have to understand the difference. <laughs> this is why we do the sort and we talk about it first. But um, you would then take one of those index cards with the word on it and team adverb would have to stand up or raise their hands if they believe it's an adverb. Team adjective would have to stand up or raise their hands if they believe that it is an adjective. So every time, you know, like if you get a team adverb or you get an adverb and team adverb gets it right, it's a lot of the word adverb, um, then they get a point. So then let's say next round you pull an adjective, then team adjective gets a point. And you're just kind of like pulling cards randomly so you don't really know what you're going to get. And you say like, I don't know, like first team to 10 points wins. Another thing you could do to make it even harder is to throw in some nouns and verbs and that way, sometimes neither team adverb nor team adjective will actually get a point and the kids have to think about the different parts of speech and maybe verbally identify what a word is, like if it's a noun, um, even if neither team gets a point. Okay, so that's team adjective and adverb. Next up, we have a scavenger hunt. This is one that I think is good once you've had the kids working with adverbs for a while, um, you can either give them a passage or have them look in books, you know, in the classroom library or whatever. And their goal is to find as many adverbs as possible. Now with adverbs, sometimes they're a little bit harder to find than other parts of speech. So you may want to be selective in the text that you're giving the kids, um, but they really love you know, going to do a scavenger hunt. And then um, we talk about finding ad adverbs in the wild. So like in actual books that they're reading, I try to encourage them to look for those example adverbs, you know, not just during the scavenger hunt, but afterwards as well. Okay, last up, don't know if you can see that one, but this says sentence grab bag. This game is so fun. And this is something that you would do after you have taught multiple different parts of speech. This is a great way um, to just kind of review them. So the first thing you would do is you would prepare three bags. I like to use paper bags, but they can also just be like colored containers. And in each container, you put word cards. Now, one of the bags or containers is for nouns. One of them is for verbs. And then one of them is for adverbs. And then what the kids do is they will each pull one from, a con from each container. So like they'll pull a noun, a verb, and an adverb. And then they have to come up with a silly sentence that uses all three of those words. So I don't know, like, you know, the elephant swam slowly. It doesn't have to be a silly sentence. It can make sense, but sometimes they come up with silly stuff and it's super fun. You could do this... Um, as a partner game, you could maybe do it whole class, although not as many kids get to participate. So you could do it in small group. You could also have the kids write the sentences after they, you know, pull them and form them orally. That is a great extension option as well. All right, so I hope that these five adverb activities were helpful for you. If you are looking for a comprehensive grammar program that not only gets kids excited about learning this stuff, but also gives them opportunities to apply it to real reading and writing, which is the whole purpose of learning about adverbs. Um, take a look at my Grammar Alive resource. I have it for kindergarten, first grade, or second grade. You know, and at each grade level, we're obviously doing things that are most appropriate. Some of these things like wouldn't be appropriate for kindergarten, right? So each, each level of the program has something that's specifically designed for kiddos at that grade level. Tons of fun activities, resources like this poster and that sort sort <laughs> just lots of good stuff in there all right thanks again for watching hope this was helpful hit the like button subscribe and i'll see you in the next video